EV sales in the United States are soaring, but 2017 is just getting started. I have some data here from ev-volumes.com and we're gonna dig into it and try to understand what's going on in the market here. Stay tuned. Hey, thanks for joining me here on Teslanomics. I'm Ben Sullins, where each week what we do here is we decode the data behind Tesla, a company that's really changing our world like no other. And while everyone else focuses on the flashy sex appeal of it, we like to see the facts and figures, the data, and really try to understand the meaning. So today, what I'm excited about is that I have some updated information about the EV market in the United States. And so with this, what I want to do is I want to look at a few different things. I want to look at the overall change in what's going on with the sales in the United States, a little bit about the plug-ins versus the battery EVs, then we'll get into the Model 3 and even talk about Tesla overall and see how they're doing. So let's dive into the data now. So sales for January, February, and March, Q1 of 2017 are up overall 47% year over year. January was 72% up, February was 55% up, and March was 31% up. Now that is with 40,700 plug-in sales and a market share of 1% overall for the first three months. That's tremendous. That's a big jump for this market, which is growing. Now, if you look at overall vehicle sales, they're not actually doing so hot. So the EV market is thriving, and I think it's signaling the beginning of a shift towards more sustainable forms of transport, whether that's a plug-in electric hybrid or a battery plug-in like a Tesla. Now the BEV category, the battery electric vehicle category is dominated by Tesla, which was almost half of all sales of EVs in Q1. So we're looking at about 250,000 plug-in EV sales in the US in 2017. Now, a lot of that is due to the longer range battery EVs coming to market. The Chevy Bolt is already here and hopefully Chevy is gonna ramp that up because right now it's pretty limited what they're doing in terms of where they're selling and the volume that they're selling. But with the Model 3 coming in and possibly a next gen Leaf and maybe even some other ones coming to market this year, what we're gonna see, I believe, is a big surge because these cars are now affordable and they're much more practical. You don't have range anxiety and charging infrastructure is growing. So there's a lot more reasons to have an EV. And a lot of people, since the price is coming down as well, I think it's gonna be a really attractive option for a lot of folks here in the United States. Now this is great because prior to that growth from 2011 to 2016 was only 54 percent overall uh, from 2011 to 2016 so not huge um, that's compared to 72 percent of the worldwide market so worldwide other countries are growing much much faster than the u.s market and that's 143 percent in china so china is really the world's largest market that's growing the fastest but the fact that in the US from last year to this year so far in Q1, we're seeing a big jump, that's really encouraging that EVs are growing in commonality and a lot of more people are deciding that they're a good option for them. Of course, the Model 3 is one of the big reasons why there's such a huge emphasis this year on 2017 being a big year for EVs. Now, Electrek was estimating at about 80,000 units. I don't know if they've come back on that at all, but EV volumes, the guys where I got this data from, they're predicting at least 50,000 deliveries of the new Tesla Model 3 in the US this year. So that's good news if you're a reservation holder. Um, and according to the earnings call they just had a couple days ago uh, for Q1, um, it looks good. Uh, on the earnings call, they said the Model 3 is on track and hope to be producing 5,000 Model 3s per week at some point in 2017. Now, one big question about this, though, with Tesla's Model 3 is their rush to productionize their assembly line. Now, other ways that companies do it, the traditional way, is they have these cheaper parts that they kind of test the assembly line with, and then before they get like the steel die cast ones and the ones that are really the productionized ones. So they're skipping that phase of testing their, their production line and going straight to the final, the, the, the final fittings and the final machinery and everything. So that could be a home run for them, or it, they could strike out. It could cause major problems for them down the road because there are issues that they identify. Now, they already have release candidates out there. We've all seen the videos of the release candidates driving around and all that. And everything else seems to be on track as well, including all the vendors that are selling parts to them. Tesla indicated that that's going well. So I'm thinking somewhere between 50,000 and 80,000, hopefully towards the 80,000, we'll see Model 3s actually being delivered in the US this year. That would be a tremendous number. And again, it's actually gonna bump up the number of uh, electric vehicles in California since California already has almost 50% of the entire US market. 
Now, a big question about the Model 3, and you've asked me this as well, is what's going to happen to the tax credit? Is the tax credit phasing out? Well, uh, Clean Technica, which is a great website with a lot of good info about the EV market, has a really good post. I'm going to link to the description down below where they talk about this. And the idea is that, uh, yes, Tesla is likely to hit the 200,000th car sold in the U.S. this year. It'll probably be late in the year. So, I would imagine, or I'm guessing that any any car sold or that you you know you, you received from Tesla this year will get the full $7,500 tax credit. But once they hit that mark, once they hit that 200,000th car sold in the U.S., that's when the tax credit starts to phase out. Now, some details on that, and I'm getting this again from Clean Technica, so you can reference that. The full amount of the EV qualifying tax credit is in place during the entire calendar quarter, in which. 200,000 EVs are sold by a manufacturer and through the subsequent quarter. So that means that if they hit it in Q4, that that full credit will remain you know, even after the 200,000 mark, and then it'll also extend into Q1 of the following year. Now, then the tax credit is reduced by 50%, so $3,750 $3, for Tesla models for the next two quarters. So if we're just following along here, that would mean that we would have uh, all, the, all the cars sold by Tesla this year would get the full, uh, the full credit. And then also, if it's going into the following credit, that'd be a following quarter, that would be all the cars sold in Q1 of 2018. Then in Q2 and Q3 of 2018, you would only get 50% 50, 50 of that. So you'd get the 3,750. Then the credit is reduced again to 25%, so $1,875 uh, of the original amount for the subsequent two quarters. So... Um, after that, the, the credit is, expires completely. So you're looking at least until the end of 2018, most likely, before any before the credit's gone. Um, and you're possibly looking to Q2 and maybe Q1 of 2018 before it starts to get reduced. So I wouldn't be too worried about it if you already have an, a, a reservation in. But if you haven't placed one yet, yeah, I, you're probably not going to get the full credit. Uh, but of course, there are other options. You can get a used Model S which you don't get any credit for, but you save a huge amount on. Um, or you can get, uh, you, you can buy just a new Model S or Model X earlier than that and guarantee that you will get that credit. So uh, if you're on the fence about that, I would say if you're really focused on the credit, then you're probably gonna wanna look at the Model S or Model X um, if you don't already have a Model 3 reservation. So when it comes to EV sales in the US, Tesla is really the ruler here. They, they really are the king. When you combine the Model S and Model X, uh, Tesla actually accounted for 48% of the battery EV sales in the United States. That's huge. I mean, they own the market, essentially. There aren't many other uh, many other industries where somebody has 48% of all sales um, and isn't isn't you know kind of dubbed the king of that. So Tesla is really really ruling here. With the Model 3, I don't see that 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 changing that much. I mean, GM is still kind of playing with the idea. I know they have the Bolt out there and the Volt actually, which I think is a better car. Uh, but they're not whole scale, uh, you know, pushing it. They still are focused on selling the high end SUVs, which is where the big money makers are. Now, as SUVs and even trucks get into the electric space, I know Tesla announced it, uh, as well as there's a few other companies that are doing this. Um, that's where I think you're going to see uh, the other big players get really, really involved. So right now, I think Tesla's going to, or for the foreseeable future, Tesla's going to dominate the EV sales this year for the battery electric vehicles. And it's also surprising that the Nissan Leaf is still selling pretty well, even with the new one coming out um, and the Chevy Bolt, I think is really just being limited by their rollout strategy. I think the Bolt would sell incredibly well if they actually made the car and made it available to more places. As you guys have uh, shared with me, it's I was totally un unbeknown to me. Uh, I thought it was available everywhere, but it's only available in certain states and limited quantities. So uh, it's selling well, but it's not really available yet. So I think that if Chevy wanted to, they could really push it with the Bolt, especially being a first to market with a, a car that's around 35,000 that gets over 200 miles. And it's a decent car. I did a test drive of it, um, you know, and not the best car guy out there. So I couldn't judge on that, but I thought it was fine. I wouldn't, you know, I'm, I'm not hating on it at all. Uh, I don't think it's, it compares to a Tesla really, but in any regard, I think Chevy could do really well if they wanted to, but we'll see, you know, they don't have the best reputation in the EV market. So let me know what you think. Are you in the market for an EV? Are are you looking at a Nissan Leaf, a Chevy Bolt, maybe a Volt instead, which I'm starting to become more and more a fan of? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. And, and as always, uh, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you back here next time.